or uh, changing the inclination of the upper or lower front teeth. And now here we analyze the movement, and this is very important to define the needed force system. And from here, you can start thinking to the best mechanics you, you can get for this. So let's see this. And we um, do the same thing we have done before. We don't need a scale definition because it's already there, Let's see. And uh, we, we can go on, create new unit, upper incisor, I will call it like that. I define the bracket position here, the blue is the initial point. I define the CR. And I'll start drawing. Let me increase a large image so you see better, hopefully. Okay, you yeah, have my incisor. Yeah. And I start moving it to bring it to the red position. The red position is my this final position as I have decided it in the occlusogram. So I can make a translation. I can make a rotation. I can make so bring it parallel to the red position. And move it exactly. Maybe not so exactly, but I can improve it. Uh -oh. I'm very close. I would say no, it's okay. So that's the movement I'm planning. You see? From the blue to the red, have this center rotation. This is the movement of the CR. There is a lot of intrusion, but there is also some retraction, and there is a change of the inclination. This is the center resistance. Now, if I click here, here is the line of action of the force I have to use. And you can play with this as much as you like, and you can work and find the force system that you need. Uh, for me, this is a very clear indication. I don't need to do the DMA for this kind of movement, which is very straightforward to me. But for my students, it is important because they see the relation between the movement and the force system. And these arrows you see here, which represents the needed single force vector to get this. It tells to you, for example, that you need to use a cantilever with configuration for intrusion and retraction. And it tells you that you also have this area in order to make the ligature, the attachment between the anterior segment and um, the retraction intrusion cantilever. So to me, uh, this is very important. I, I'm using this for more complex stuff because now, you know, I've been doing so many times this kind of movements that I don't even need any more the dental movement analysis. But still, uh, there are many situations which are more complex than this that I, I do use the dental movement analysis also on frontal view, on occlusal view, and this stuff. And it is uh, very important. 
as I asked to my students, that every time they have to make a big movement, not the finishing movement. For the finishing movement, it doesn't matter. For the finishing movement, you rely on the shape of your arch, on the bend you might do on the wire, whatever you like. But for the big movements like this one, think to the force system that you need in order to get it. This is very, very important. And we can repeat the same thing if you like. So you can see that this can be repeated for the lower. The lower is very, is as well very simple, but you will see that again. I had an, another, uh, sorry, I have to add um, another unit here. Lower incisor. Again, I define the bracket position, center of resistance, and I start drawing and now I will move it. With this. I move it. You see that if I make a pure translation, I'm almost there. Besides that, I see the apex is a little bit to the distal. So I might add a little bit of rotation. And I would say that this is. And here are the two force vector that are corresponding to the dental movement. And I, I find this part uh, one of the most beautiful parts of uh, my practice. I mean, to know that whatever I need to do is related to some mechanical solution. And those of you who know me very well, that they they do know that I would never start a, a treatment without thinking to the mechanics. I'm never using wire to align or whatever. Start thinking to this first. And it gives me the possibility of doing any kind of movement. There are movements that are more complex, very straightforward movements. I know I know there is a cantilever to get this, which is very simple, but there are other movements that might not be so simple. See here I have the two molars. And here I have only one single first molar. So I'm placing the bracket here. I'm placing the CR here. And I will draw my molar. I'm not, I'm not. saying I'm a very good drawer, but you have to accept this. Be patient with me. Okay, if you want to improve it, you can make a better cusp here, whatever. So now we have this tooth and we want to bring and it we want. to a better position. Uh, let's say that I'm moving this tooth up to this level but it also requires some uprighting. Okay, so that's the force ve vector is calculated for this kind of movement. As you see, it's very well below the CR, and it's at the level so far from the from the uh, bracket level. It's at least 10 millimeters, maybe even more than that, which is very unlikely that you are able to work with cantilever and extension and so deep and. Uh, and this means that you are not able to uh, obtain the solution with 
what we call a single uh, force, as you see here. I mean, the single force, of course, of course, is mathematically possible, but you cannot apply it as a single force in your mouth. And in this case, uh, uh, there are several options. Either you work with statically indeterminate mechanics, this means you are working at the bracket, giving the right moment to force ratio, if you are good at that. Or you can work with what we call uh, two vector mechanics. Two vector mechanics are two vectors that you can figure out that sum together will give this um, exactly this vector. So there is another part of the software uh, which can do a lot of um, things on them uh, regarding. Um, the vector calculation, and I will show this to you. So I'm clicking here on vector calculator. I will do new calculation. I mean, all this is very much part of my uh, biomechanics courses. Um, click here on couple replacement. And for object, you will call it lower molar. Now what you have? Here's the force you need to produce. Well, now we decide to find two different points of application. One could be mesial to the molar, and one could be in the canine area. Now you see these two vectors here. These two vectors here might be a solution. So if you apply this force here plus this force here, this means with this amount of force which you read here, and with this point of application, and with this angulation, everything is reported here numerically, you get the same result as this vector here. And um, for example, and these two vectors are not very difficult to get. I mean, nowadays, if you if you want to work with TADs, you might place a TADs in this area, and uh, uh, work with this direction. I know that there are problems on the three dimension, but let's keep it simple because I'm giving, I'm telling you things that if someone has not. Uh, a very good biomechanics knowledge are, are very complex. But let's keep it in a little bit simpler because we are in two dimension. I know it's not the whole story, but this is the first attempt to tell you something about the two vector mechanics. And uh, if you combine this with uh, an upright in cantilever able to slide and attached here with this kind of activation, you get exactly this four system. So I'm doing this kind of vector calculation whenever the needed for system is not, um, uh, cannot be reached directly. Otherwise I, I use a single cantilever or a single coil spring or elastic ligature uh, attached to some power arms. So with this in mind, with with this in mind, I hope that I gave you just a, a little look of, of what the DMA can do. The DMA is a software. You can play with this. I mean, uh, you have the, the software in your computer. So we'll save this project. <clears throat> with this software, with the movement calculator, vector calculator, then there is another thing which is called Y calculator. I'm not using that very much, and personally, I think it has to be very much improved. But anyway, uh, there are a lot of things already there. What you can do is analyze the movement, find out the needed force system. Then there is another part I didn't show to you, is analyze the force system that can be applied to the reactive units. This is important to evaluate the anchorage issues. And finally, you can uh, perform Victoria calculators that sometimes are very useful. I mean, I gave you an example, but there can be other conditions where you want to make Victoria calculations. 
And people ask me sometimes, oh, Giorgio, are you doing every time this kind of calculations? Not that frequently. It means that I'm not doing this for the great majority of my cases, but sometimes I face a new problem. Sometimes I face a condition which uh, I've never faced and uh, I have to find out a solution for it. And if I think to this, um, I use the system to uh, speed up my capability of planning new mechanics. And I, I, I can tell you that if I ha had given a name to all combination of forces and that I have used in my life, I, I, I really would have given my name to a lot of different appliances. And But all this, this is just a software which is connected with your cruisogram, but all this requires a good knowledge of biomechanics. I mean, I'm not expecting uh, anyone who has very little knowledge of biomechanics to do something about this. This is something that can be used by someone who has been trained in biomechanics quite well. Otherwise, I mean, if you are just using a straight wire system, forget it. It doesn't has no meaning for you. Okay, so I don't want to offend anyone, but I had to show this to you because it was part of this and let you know what we have in all the system. But we. Uh, in order to get real advantage of this, you have to go through a biomechanics training. Okay.